a wonderful good afternoon. Wonderful good afternoon to all OPDs. I hope the lunch was wonderful and to all new guests, to our VIP guests, we welcome you. I believe uh, most of you know me by now and for those who have joined us as well, my name is Claudia Gosso. I'm one of the program managers at the Konrad Adenauer Foundation Namibia Angola Country Office. I will be moderating this afternoon's session together again uh, with our cooperation partners who are joining us at the launch of the Constitution in Braille. But for now, let's stick to the uh, highlights, which is the official presentation of the findings for the, uh, the morning session we had regarding a policy review um, a disability sector in Namibia. It has been quite a fruitful morning with the organization of persons with disabilities and we thank also the National Disability Council of Namibia representative as well as the representative for law reform as well as one of the parliamentary researchers as well as finally last but not least Mr. Felicity Overseas from representing Ministry of Justice. Then we would like to also thank our OPDs for the insightful inputs, challenges, and as we stand here, I will introduce the, the most special guest for this session shortly. I just want to highlight ongoing mobilization, regional outreach, to rural communities to be expanded, access to education, the need to update organizational plans, school intake, increased interpreters in the country, training of municipal staff, training of school teachers, training of police force. We have spoken about the disability policy that needs to be updated and amended. We have spoken about sensitive topics of abortion and sterilization, rape, to name just a few. We have spoken about solutions from OPDs, talking about online programs, access to for instance a sign language dictionary that is updated ongoingly for the sake of keeping persons with disabilities in Namibia well informed and provide persons with disabilities to access to information, education. Last but not least, service delivery in the country to cater for specific disabilities. We have such a broad area of disabilities in the country. Service delivery has a long way to go and one of the key words today, I am sure our director at the Konrad Adenauer Foundation will highlight to invited guests. Most importantly, the representation of correct data, sufficient data to persons with disabilities. Looking at transport sector, construction sector, looking at resources that are lacking, some of the organizations that are run by one or two persons, not enough teachers and schools to deal with special needs. Let me not go on. Let me not take up too much time. I'm going to now officially hand over and give the floor to Mr. Matthew Sashongo from the um, National Federation of Persons with Disabilities in Namibia to present to you the findings from the deliberations today and of course also to once again remind us what the role of the Federation is and what the role of his colleagues are as well, what the ministry represents, what the National Disability Council represents. This is the time for the representatives from these institutions 
to also chip in and share some of your challenges if there is time. I will try and have strict timekeeping this time around. As you note, we have been running behind program meaning that uh, uh, sincere apologies to our cooperation partner. We might actually run also a bit uh, behind with the launch later on. Thank you very much. And with that, I for now hand over to Mr. Hashongo. Uh, Director of Proceedings, I, I want to honor you by standing on the protocol already established. Um, Mr. Basirius, the Ombudsman, uh, good afternoon. Uh, members or the leaders of the OPDs, uh, a very good afternoon. And uh, all the members of the OPDs, uh, ministerial officials present and uh, member of the medias and everyone in the house a very good morning or afternoon to you uh, speaking is matthew hashongo i'm the national chairperson of nfpdn the national federation of people with disability in namibia and uh, i'm hereby presenting the findings um before that uh uh, uh, before I start with the findings, I just want uh, to to refresh or to to refresh what is the role of NPDN and what is our vision. If you may allow me just to run through quickly, the National Federation of People with Disability was constituted as an umbrella organization in response to the needs, uh, collective voice and actions to, to counter the press, the press gross and social, social marginalizations of, of people with disability. NFPD and therefore committed itself to champion the cause of people with disability lobby and advocate for social justice, equity, and their empowerment. And our mission is to promote social justice, economic and well-being, and sustainable developments of persons with disability in Namibia. I believe that uh, everyone now is aware and know what is NFPDN? We are in advocacy, and we are there, uh, and we are lobbying the, uh, for the rights of persons with disability in Namibia. And the NFPDN, as an umbrella body, we do have now eleven affiliates. That uh, most of them they have already introduced themselves, and their leader are present. Uh, actually. As I said it before the lunch, I said our challenges are almost the same. In fact, they are just the same. And uh, most of the OPDs presented, uh, I don't want to, to name it that we are repeating the same things, but that is the fact. Our needs have to be understood are similar. But we do have common goals. And we do have common challenges. Um, I think when we are looking at this policy, the, one of the challenges that we do have, or the findings that I have found out, I believe we are leaders of organizations, but I believe our members are still in dilemma because we, this policy is not well known policy. If you can agree with me, if you know how these uh, inclusive educations are being marketed and so on, the government is committed to some of these things. But if we are talking about the national disability policy, it's not really known by, uh, by most of our members. Even some of the organizations, 
and we are now feeling that we are not really safe just to have the policy, but at least we are crying for the, for, 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 for the act, Disability Act in Namibia, like other countries have. Um, I believe every, almost every OPD spoke about educations. Yes, I, I, I believe that, and I'm in agreement with Mr. Paul when he said, uh, I believe the SN nations, we are not ready for inclusive educations. Even though it was launched, I believe uh, there is still challenges in, in inclusive educations. Uh, it, was, uh, it was adopted, I think, it, it, in 2015. I'm under corrections. But if we are looking the outputs, seriously, you are, it's really not appreciatable. The government, I think, is too slow. Indeed, it's, it's not doing much on it. Because if we are looking at till now, we do have only seven schools among, not even school. If we are to say the main streaming school, maybe it's only three school. Last year, last month, I, I, we visited even Kunene at Kameru Combined School. Where one of the, the uh, that Kameru school, there is a, a main, uh, I mean, there is a division of disability. And the school, it's not conducive. And there is learners also with physical disability. But the, mo hard, uh, the most heartbreaking thing, our learners, the grade one, learn, uh, grade one and grade two and three, and the primary school, they are being taught in one class by one teacher. You see how heartbreaking is it? And it's not good. We really need to, if we meant inclusive education, as Miss, I'm sorry, I forgot the name, let it meant even in practical. And I like to say it that Namibian flameworks or what, the, the papers or administration issues are in a good standard, but practical, it's a mess. We need to uh, clarify it and we need to stood together and fight it. We really need total mend of inclusive educations. And uh, when you, um, we are talking about that Namibia is one of, and I believe in most of the recommendations from the international bodies, they are asking that, and it's one of the challenge that we don't have a disability disaggregated data. And if you tell me now how many persons with disability, or let me say visually impaired, they will just give you that maybe we are 85,000, but what are their needs? What are their challenges? What, how many are females? How many are males? What are, you see, that's why the government is not doing any collective decisions to all this uh, disability. They are not doing it. They are not doing it because of lack of information. How can you influence the, the finance department or the finance people? You have to convince them with the data that are supported. But as a country, we lack that. And that is one of the critical uh, findings that I have found. Also, um, lack of financial support. Uh, I believe everyone agrees that Namibia now we have uh, named that we are the middle income country. And that one, it's really killed most of the organizations. We are now dormant. Because the, most of the donors have withdrawn. Sometimes we are looking to the government. We don't really need to depend on the government for financial because they will dictate on you. You know, you are a beggar, you cannot have anything. We need to be independent, but financially we need the support from the government for, for us to execute our duties, for us to operate. But as we are talking right now, we are most of the OPDs. They are dormant. And there is no way you can keep the tree for 100 years if it's not bearing any fruits. What is the result? You have to close it down or you have to cut it down. We don't want the voice of disability movement or advocates to die in Namibia. I think that is one of our challenges that we have. We need a financial support. Um, 
and when I am also, I'm taking some points to, uh, according to what is, uh, was uh, presented. And uh, uh, one thing that really critical in Namibia is this. Um, we do have, we do have this national policy, and it's clear stated. Allow me to trace the document. Allow me to trace the document. I hope I'm not taking too much time, but I want to give the fact from the from the policy. Ah, technology is failing us here. But anyway, it's okay. The yeah, sorry. Searchers here. Yes, maybe they will help. <laughs> yes, maybe they will help. Let me just say it. That uh, I was reading through it, and it's made, if you are looking in that policy under the health system, I, I, under the health, there is a quote that I like most, that the government was supposed at least to give the training, especially to the caregivers, and also to provide the assistive devices. Uh, to the persons with disability, more especially the community rehabilitation center. Uh, as we are talking right now, it's one of the challenges that we do have now. The government is coming out saying that we do have the what? We do have the budget for assistive device, but uh, it's a mess. Let's admit it. Even the wheelchairs, even the, scr I mean the crutches, it's really the, the rehabilitation centers. There were certainly a group of people that were trained, especially the, the, the persons with disability. But now they are thrown out by the government. They wasted the government's resources. They were trained, and now they have full of skill, but there is no centers for them to exercise their knowledge. You know how the government is losing. The people, there are those people that are invest, I mean, they are vested with knowledge, but now, as we are talking, people are just home. And as we are talking right now, wherever you will see, you will hear that we are looking for the wheelchair for someone, the wheelchair, I mean, we are looking for this good Samaritan to assist. What a shame to the government. I'm sorry, but I have to be realistic. Please, here, something has to be, to, 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 be, to be corrected. I'm sorry. Uh, we are talking about employment. Yes, we are talking about that we do have equity commission and most of the employers, how can, how can a wheelchair user be employed if there is no ramp? How can I be employed as a, as a deaf person if there is no sign language interpreter? So by that I concluded that is systemical. We are denied systemically. But the government was supposed, I know there is disability council here, and they were supposed to, in, to make sure that those scorecards they have been preaching for so long is now implemented. Because our people have denied now we are not employed because of the environment. It's not that we are, we are not qualified. We are qualified. There are among of us that are qualified. But due to the environment of the, the, of, of, of the employment, it's a quite challenge. Something has to be done. Mm, something that I, I, I really thought that my colleague who presented forgot is the way our medical assessment. It's outdated. The doctors now are denying our people rights to have the grant. Due to that, the, the assessment is outdated. Now you can see a person is, is an albinism, is a person with albinism, and you are denied <laughs> to, to receive a disability grant. 
It's one of the challenge. And imagine, those are the people that really were supposed to be prioritized at the first point. But you will see our medical doctors are denying our people right. I think this is where now we have to stand together and fight for it. And let's challenge the government that colleagues, here we need to negotiate because the, the doctor is much mandated. And without a doctor, you cannot do anything. Doctor, they are too powerful. If they like you, they will write you. If they are not, my friend, forget. I'm sorry. Uh, um, yes. Uh, we spoke about also um, a, a, a teenage with mental disability. They are the most victimized. As we are talking about, uh, we are talking about the inclusive, I mean the, the, the review of the national policy on disability. Uh, some of these things, they really need to be taken serious. And we need a, a, a national debate on this issue. As I'm talking right now, there is a case that happened in Kamanyab. A deaf, uh, a, 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 a deaf child was raped, and the police officers refused to open a case. You see, some of these things really are the things really happening in the society, but I, I tried to report it somewhere, but nothing is moving. What went wrong somewhere? There is something that we really need to, to, to relook at. Um, I'm also um, looking at the issue of, 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 uh, of recognizing the sign language. In every interview that I have made, I have been preaching it. A, a, a braille constitution is one of my, 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 my outcry. But now we have answered. I mean, I, I want to congratulate Corrad for making it possible with NAVI. It has been one of, since I came to my office, if you can recall my first interview, that was my first request that we wanted some of these informations. It's a public document. And they almost, I, I, I wish that every public document at least must be brailed. Because our people that are affected are very disadvantaged. And that is not good. I, I want really, I don't want to recommend, but I want to recommend. I know Mr. Uh, Basirius is here. Advocate, please. Uh, whenever we meet, I give you a task. I'm sorry, sir. I like it. I, I, I like it. That is a sign that we are working together. I want to give you a, 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 a task. On this issue, we want Namibia to recognize sign language is a language in Namibia. And, and, and I believe, let it be on the record, we are very tired. Our people are denied because uh, even to, 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 to be, re, uh, I know NNAD is giving some trainings to, to, to sign language interpreters, but they cannot be recognized by NQIA because the, it's, the language is not recognized. No wonder the police force, they don't have interpreters, the nurses, any service of the government, they don't have interpreters. How can you, but I wonder sometimes, when the president is addressing the nation, you will see uh, Aune or Selma interpreting there. Why? Because it's a language, he wants his political voice to be heard. What, why not in the service? I, I'm sorry, I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm an advocate. So, uh, so I, I think that is where we need to, to look at. The public transportations and building infrastructures. We need to sing one song. We need improvement. We really need to improvement. One day I went to this lab in, in town, this one central lab, if I'm not mistaken. I'm under corrections. I tried to, to, to chat a bit. When are you planning to do what? Until I called the, 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 the manager of the sender, the head of the sender. 
I said, please, your, your employees, they are making fun of my request. Please, I want us to agree on these things. The government institutions are resisting, restructuring, or to, to, to make a provision for wheelchair users. And you wanted the private sector to take you serious. Oh. No. There is an error somewhere. I think we need to, to, to have one voice and speak loud on this one. And let it be, uh, I know NDCN is one of their, I, I, I believe that there is a, a scorecard that they are, they are implementing. I don't know what is the name of the, 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 the product that you are working out. On the infrastructure, so standard what? It's a standard, building standard what? Yes, something like that. I wish Mr. Shombombi was here because he's the one who's spearheading that. Because we don't want any new building anymore to be built or to be approved by any local authority without a provision of lamp. Because our people now, the service is there, but our people are denied by, by these minor things. These are minor things that we need to start. It. I don't want to really to, 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 to waste time, but there is something that really want to bring on records that the OPDs and also the federations they lack capacity. What capacity do we lack? We have only limited knowledge. No limited efforts. We can be leaders. What capacity do we really it's, it's just a lack of resources that we lack. What capacity do we lack? I, I believe that it's one of the challenges. No wonder the outsiders, no wonder the donors will not entertain who wants to invest his resources in someone who lacks capacity. Who really wants to take that chance? None of us would like to, to, to take that chance. But if we continue preaching that we lack capacity, comrades, that one we are closing our doors. We have only limited uh, resources and the limited knowledge. Let's change that mindset. I hate it when they are saying, ah, no, the Federation, it lacks capacity. No, it's heartbreaking. And I don't want to be a leader of something that which I lack capacity. No. That is not the way to go. The way to go, NFPDN lack something. We lack, some, we lack finance. We lack materials. We lack computers. We lack that. But it doesn't mean that uh, I lack capacity. I know how to operate a computer. I know what. Maybe in drafting, that is when we need now to negotiate. That here I want to write a proposal. Please, can you assist me here? That is what to establish cooperation. Yes. I, I believe that um, I'm, 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 I don't want to speak much, but I have two points that I want to, 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 to highlight, to bring on the table still. Um, uh, I, 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 I don't want to go back, but I want to link these two. Uh, when a person is raped, for example, you know, we don't have a legal representation that one is the fact and it's the truth if let me say something have done wrong to nfpdn or to noyd they will just remain quiet if you go to council no we have a limited budget we can't represent you if you go to disability affairs they will speak another language you know how we are not protected we are not protected. We need someone to back us up legally. And we want, you know, the things that we, uh, Mr. Luboni was presenting here, especially the, 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 uh, the outdated uh, article and so on. And remember that there is a, a commitment that the government has made to Global Disability Summit. It, it was 2016, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct. But the government is not looking, not putting any effort. We were supposed to meet in court. 
But not, we cannot do it because we are limited somewhere. We need at least. I think now I'm trying to make some recommends. I'm doing, uh, I'm presenting and, and I'm doing some recommend. But to be honest, we need a legal backup for our voice to be heard. For Hashongo to stand here alone, he know nothing, he know not even one article. So I cannot do anything. But if we have a, a, a legal backup, it will help to strengthen our advocate. Uh, advocacy. Okay, one last challenge. I believe that uh, none of them spoke about it from the OPDs. Lack of cooperation among ourselves. And I have to say it here. We, that is the challenge that everyone don't want to hear, but it's true that we lack cooperation. I think charity let it start home. It's an advice I'm, I have to use to this platform. That the, let the charity start home. Let's cooperate. Let's work together. As a team. I know that we do have different, different challenges way and way. But if we strengthened the cooperations, I believe we are going to conquer more. Remember, I like the politicians when they are saying, uh, divided we, uh, I mean, united we stand, uh, divided we fall. A and I like it so much. Because it, in, it, it, it really keeps the fire going. So, colleagues, what if we sing the same song with the politicians? That Let's stand together and let's remain united as the movement, even though we have different uh, challenges or organizations. As the federation, I'm feeling that we need to strengthen that. L one last point. It's a political involvement. Sorry, it's very important. You know, we do have only one representative in parliament. Uh, and uh, I believe... Who have said it? Is it Mr. Paul or who? He said it somewhere. Who have said it? Political, oh, Mr. Baisako, sorry. He said that we, we are a bit limited in political man, uh, participations. Yes, the politicians, you know, they are very smart. They add something in the constitution that every Namibian have a right to participate politically. And when you are questioned, how about a person with disability? Are you not a Namibian? We are not special to reserve that, to deserve that. But we need also some, some backup from the, uh, I mean, from the politicians. We need, and I was thinking that maybe, Cora, do we need to talk? I, I'm sorry I have to announce it now. That maybe you need to, 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 to come up with a project where we are going to mobilize our members to be more active in politics. I think we need to agree on that. Because we cannot afford only one person. And if you are saying that, you know, every government that comes in, it came with their structures. You know, there is no way you will find in a government, whether SWAP or DT or PDM or whatever that will come in future. And they will remove the Ministry of Finance there or Education. But disability, how many years that uh, Dr. Pohamba uh, ruled or Dr. Sema ruled without disability ministry? We don't know what is fu in the future. We need something that really protects that. We need at least something protected by legal. We don't know, maybe we can incorporate it in our constitutions or in our national policy. Please, please I'm ever saying that Maybe in future I will be a politician. That's why I like to talk much. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hashongo, for that uh, summary of the day's discussions, I think you, you summarized it quite well.
uh, just to the policy uh, makers and decision makers, Article 8, Discrimination, the National Disability Act, the Child Care and Protection Act, Affirmative Action, Employment Act, Electoral Act, Public Enterprises Act, the Namibia National Sector Policy on Inclusivity, Inclusive Education, Convention on Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Basic Education Act, the recent Education Conference, the Persons with Disabilities Bill, Criminal Procedure Act, just a few of those that we highlighted today. And I'd also like to just also acknowledge another person in the room, uh, one of our guests, Ms. Tony Hancox from the Legal Assistance Center, the director of the Legal Assistance Center. I would like to acknowledge her as well. I do apologize for not having seen her earlier, uh, mentioned her earlier. Uh, I, I do believe the Legal Assistance Center would be uh, one of the uh, uh, go-to shops, one-stop shops, if uh, you would like to start getting more advice on legal representation, um, how to get more engaged in legal discussions, and uh, of course uh, their doors are always open, I know this for a fact, so by all means, um, yes. If uh, I could just give a few minutes over to the Ministry of Justice as well as the National Disability Council to give a few um, brief inputs with regard to this morning's session. I would appreciate it greatly, just for the sake of transparency as well, and we would like to hear your voice because uh, we do not want to leave you out. Let us start off with uh, Ms. Jessica Gavacha. If you could kindly just come and join us at the front, please. Um, thank you to the moderator, Madam Klausko. Um, uh, we acknowledge, oh sorry, do I need to introduce myself again for the third time for the new members that arrived after lunch? Um, uh, my name is Jessica Kavacha and uh, I'm the head of the legal department and the company secretary for the National Disability Council of Namibia. I think uh, for purposes of information, I think it's important to give a background into what the National Disability Council does. Um, the National Disability Council was established in 2004 by the National Disability Council Act of Namibia 26 of um, 2004. Our functions are quite broad, but in short amongst others, it includes commenting and reviewing and advising cabinet on le legislation that relates to equal treatment, including that of persons with disability, um, monitoring the implementation of the National Policy on Disability of 1996, and to take any step necessary within our mandate um, to improve the lives of persons with disabilities. Um, we're here today to celebrate the launch um, of the Constitution in Braille, and um, uh, the National Disability Council is elated at this national milestone. Um, access to information is, um, um, is linked to access to justice um, as provided for in the Namibian Constitution. Um, our Constitution is um, the supreme law of the country and uh, subsequently all our laws and policies have to be aligned with the provisions of the Constitution. Um, to have such an important document brailed um, is definitely a, a huge milestone with regards to not only access to justice, but access to information as well um, for persons with disabilities. Um, it is uh, futile to have access to certain rights as entrenched within our constitution. 
however these rights, um, access to how, what these rights are, how these rights can be protected, and who has access to these rights as not accessible to persons with disabilities. Um, as the National Disability Council, we feel that this is the commencement of a bright journey. Um, it would not only relate to the translation of the Constitution into Braille, um, but to look into the, having the Constitution also in other formats necessary for all categories of persons with disabilities, whether we will have video recordings, having interpreters um, recording the Constitution as well, and having them um, translated into plain language as well for those with intellectual um, disabilities as well. Um, so we, we deem that this will be a commencement of a journey of translation of the Constitution to make it accessible to all persons with disabilities. Um, we commend the um, Konrad Adenauer Stiftung and all role, uh, key role players in, in, in this process as well. And uh, we want to re-emphasize all the other speakers and the importance of collaborative efforts between all key stakeholders. Um, it is important to establish an information network as well um, within the disability fraternity. Um, it is important to make sure that the information is not only shared at OPD level, uh, but in terms of the national agencies that represent um, persons with disabilities. Um, this information network could then make sure that all of us have access to the information and so to empower um, persons with disabilities. Um, I think on that short note, I would um, like to thank, um, again, Konrad Adenauer Stiftung um, for, for inviting the council. And we would also like to indicate that we will be launching um, the national regional consultations on the um, Persons with Disabilities Bill, as well as the reviewed national policy on disability and the National Disability Council has equally prepared a draft report on the domestic framework on the rights of uh, persons with disabilities. And these working documents will be workshopped um, with all key st stakeholders, and we will also conduct um, regional workshops um, on the draft persons with disabilities bill, the policy and the report as well. And everyone will be invited formally um, for those discussions as well. And we encourage everyone to also provide the input into these working documents because all of these issues that have been raised by the stakeholders will be addressed in these working documents. We've also noted um, that there has been a recent social attack on persons of albinism uh, relating to um, as a human trafficking and organ trafficking as well. And provisions such as the concealment and the protection of persons with disabilities um, have been included into the draft bill of persons with disabilities. And most of these social, the right to vote, how it will be protected as well um, through our stakeholder EC in the Electoral Commission of Namibia, um, all of these rights will be catered for in the Draft Persons with Disabilities Act. So we encourage everyone to look at these documents. Um, the process can be preempted. Um, kindly do get my contact details and we can forward the soft copies so that before the launch of the program, I think all of the stakeholders are well informed and then can make comprehensive inputs into these documents. We thank you for having us and we celebrate with you. Thank you very much for, for those closing remarks to today's presentation of findings and the National Disability Policy Review Working Session and for your participation, National Disability Council of Namibia. I believe uh, we are going to hear a little bit more about the launch after the tea break and I just uh, would like to Thank you all for once again joining us. Uh, as I had previously stated, we would have liked uh, Ms. Felicity to come on. I know that she's giving the keynote address today as well for the launch, but just to conclude on the presentation of findings uh, of the uh, Disability Policy Review session, I uh, thought it important for her to give a few remarks. And after her... Um, speech then we will go out for tea for the next five minute recess and come back to, to uh, have a 
the landmark event to close off the day with. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Felicity Officers. I'm the um, Chief Director, Legislative Drafting Minister of Justice, and also currently the Acting Executive Director at the Ministry. Now, the role of the Minister of Justice is to provide um, timely and accessible legal services to all persons. Now, some of the functions within the, direct, um, within the Ministry are to reform the country's laws and policies, and also to ensure that we finalize government legislation on time. So I think those are some of the key functions that the minister is important. Now the question is, what are the rights? Um, why are rights important? Why is it important to have rights in, in Namibia? Because if you have a right, you are able to go to court and enforce your right. You are able to ask the court for a remedy. Another aspect of uh, the importance of rights is, it is important because it will enable you to solve your problems. Meaning, say now, um, if you have, um, for example, a right to housing, um, or if you have a right to access to information, you can use this access to information to further your other rights. That's the importance of it. Now, um, what I could uh, um, uh, gather from, from today's session is um, some of the needs that were identified um, relevant to the persons living with disabilities is. There is a need for evidence-based planning. Evidence-based planning in terms of data that needs to inform our policies and laws. Second is the practical impl implementation of the policies and laws that have been enacted or have been published or adopted by cabinet. The other is the collective decision making for government to speak one voice when it comes to persons with disabilities because it makes no sense to have scattered or uncoordinated plans and policies um, and, and, and because that results in uncoordinated or unharmonized implementation of such. The other aspect is the infrastructure such as roads and education and workplaces that are still not adequately catering for persons with disabilities. The other aspect is the financial, the human resource, and the technical needs that persons with disabilities have in order to further their specific rights. Linked to this is also aspects of training. Training not only of interpreters, but training also of caregivers um, to ensure that the needs of persons with disabilities and rights are, are met. Last but not least is the aspect of advocacy. And I've taken one point from uh, um, what was presented here. The need to speak one voice and so that we are better to able, uh, so that we are in a better position or a stronger position to influence, or le let me say, in a stronger position to stand together and influence government policy and lawmaking. And with that, I, I conclude. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Felicity. I can listen to you all day long. I know you have a lot of knowledge uh, in, in that brain, so please, by all means, as uh, Mr. Shongo has already mentioned, let us be one voice together. Let us cooperate going forward, and let us quickly uh, go into recess so that we can finish off today with uh, a landmark event that uh, Namibia has been waiting for for a very long time. And we are very, very proud to host this landmark uh, launch of the Constitution in Braille, together with our cooperation partners from the Namibia Federation for Visual Pairments. Um, and of course, with uh, the director, Mr. Mosen Gibandulwa, we thank you very much. You've put a lot of effort into this year. And uh, with that, I'm going to close for tea session. Uh, it is now quarter past three and we will be resuming again at half past three officially. So thank you.
Yes, a wonderful good afternoon once again. And I believe uh, we are almost through with today. It's been quite a long day for some of us. Quite informative, quite empowering as well. So let us then officially open for the launch of the Constitution of Namibia in Braille, grade one, that is. We are going to shortly introduce our guests as well. Our director is going to give a few brief welcoming remarks. Mr. Moses Ngipandruwa, director of the Namibia Federation for Visual Impairments, is going to also give an introduction or overview, that is, of the statistics for persons with disabilities, in particular visual impairments in Namibia. The importance of this landmark launch is then going to be highlighted in the keynote address by Ms. Felicity Overses, representing the Minister of Justice, Honorable Yvonne Dausa. Further, I would like to also give a big Welcome to our online viewers this evening. As this important event is live streamed, as the public needs to know that the Constitution of Namibia is going to be accessible in Braille. We would also like to thank the other distribution centers in the country, one of whose representatives are sitting here tonight for the National Library of Namibia, Ms. Victoria Isaks. Other than that, we will have, of course, from Mr. Ngipandulwa, an overview of the distribution centers of the Constitution in Braille. And then we will conclude with closing remarks from Ms. Jessica Gavasev, who is representing also a key institution when it is coming to representing persons with disabilities, and that is the National Council for the Dis Disabilities in Namibia. With that, I would like to take up no more time and hand over to our cooperation partner just to give brief introductions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, uh, Ms. Claudi, uh, Master of Proceedings. I stand, bef I stand before you uh, on the protocol observed. Uh, however, I would like to specifically um, appreciate uh, the presence of um, uh, the advocate, uh, Ombudsman. And uh, at the same time, uh, I, would, I would also like to appreciate uh, the presence of, um, of um, uh, Ms. Uh, Natalia uh, Ruslan uh, from the Kasi Foundation. Uh, I recognize um, Ms. Uh, Felicity uh, from uh, Ministry of Justice uh, representing, I believe, uh, Honorable um, Yvonne uh, Dauseb. And um, at the same time, I would, I would also love to recognize the presence of, presence of um, uh, Mr. Edward Eliphas, uh, I believe uh, he represents the Disability Affairs Division. Um, so I would um, be not fair if I could uh, not recognize uh, uh, the man himself, uh, Comrade Matthew Ashongo, uh, NFBDN Chairperson. Um, so um, all the delegates um, or participants. Uh, medias present, um, NVI members uh, sitting there in the middle. So good afternoon. Thank you. All right. Um, my name is Moses uh, Nipandura, a fully member of uh, the Namibian Federation of the Visual Embed. And uh, fortunately, I happen to become the director of uh, our own organization, our own Federation of the Visually Impaired. 
Um, I just would like to uh, a bit um, give you the, uh, the statistic uh, when it's coming to uh, disability, uh, specifically visual impaired. Um, but uh, during the day, um, we have heard about uh, challenges, and among the challenges is uh, on the data. Um, the OPDs uh, uh, feel that uh, uh, when it's coming to data of persons with disability, uh, they are not uh, accurate. Uh, somehow, somewhere, um, things need to be to be fixed, and I believe that uh, the Namibia, uh, the National Statistics Agency, uh, need really to look into that matter more specifically, uh, because uh, if uh, the data are not accurate, uh, this might have uh, some negative uh, effect when it's coming to to distributions uh, of uh, resources. So um, in Namibia. Uh, when it's coming to person with disability, you have heard in the morning that uh, five percent it uh, constitute five percent it constitutes the populations uh, of um, person with disability. Uh, when it's coming to the entire um, uh, population of uh, persons uh, who are Namibian citizens, so um, it uh, again. Um, uh, show that um, um, person with uh, physical uh, disability uh, contribute uh, uh, 37 uh, percent. Uh, and then um, the visual impaired contribute uh, 35 percent and um, the hearing impaired or the deaf um, people contribute uh, uh, 17 percent if I'm not wrong. Uh, then uh, it also goes uh, that um, um, there are regions that are more uh, affected, all regions that uh, you will find more persons with uh, disability. And uh, these regions are, 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 are the all four regions. I know that uh, you know the all four regions. Um, number one is the Omsati region. Uh, it has um, 15,000 uh, person with uh, disability. And um, the second one is um, uh, Ohangwena, uh, that have uh, uh, 13,000. And then the third one is Kavango, uh, that's now Kavango East and West, uh, that have uh, 12,000 um, point, um, point six. And then the third one is um, uh, Oshikoto, uh, that have uh, 12,000.17, somewhere there. And then um, the, the, the fourth one is, um, is, is, is uh, commas uh, that have 10,000 uh, and uh, followed by Oshana. And then the list from the bottom is um, uh, Omaheke and, and the cars that have uh, 2,000 something uh, person with uh, disability. So when it's coming to now to visual impaired um, uh, population or statistic, uh, the region that uh, you will find more person with uh, visual impairment is um, Ohangwena, uh, followed by Kavango, Kavango East-West, um, and then uh, uh, followed by uh, Omsati region, and then uh, followed by um, uh, Oshikoto. So it's where you will find more uh, persons uh, with uh, visual impairments. And then um, uh, the information goes that um, um, the, 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 the effect or the cause of visual impairments are more being uh, caused by various uh, diseases. Uh, one, is diabetes, uh, other ones um, epilepsy, the other one is uh, chicken post, the other one is um, um, HIV and AIDS, and then uh, the last one is an uh, uh, accident that's happening. So those are some of uh, um, things that are, are more 
contributing to visual impairment uh, uh, society. So I just again want to go back to say that uh, uh, this data might be not uh, well uh, verified, but uh, as in uh, OPDs, uh, particularly NVI, we are, you know, base our decisions based on uh, the available data that, uh, that we have. And I know that uh, the upcoming um, census uh, things will be, will be sorted uh, out uh, uh, very well, uh, provided that um, persons with disability uh, uh, will be part or will be, will be considered to, to contribute on how um, census must be conducted, more specifically when it's coming to persons with uh, disability. So, um, furthermore, I just again uh, would like to say that um, uh, a lot of things have, uh, have been, uh, have been uh, addressed and uh, honest speaking is that uh, we sometimes just uh, came here um, for you no know, discussions and then later on we leave everything that uh, we have discussed here. So we heard about uh, how uh, Comrade Nathie was, uh, was preaching um, I believe that uh, if your heart can't be, you know, shaken, uh, I don't know <laughs> what else do you do you want. But uh, more specifically, to be honest, uh, um, I don't want to touch the other parts. Uh, we are talking about uh, major challenges that are facing person with disability. Number one, employment. Uh, secondly, accessibility, and then uh, thirdly. We are talking about uh, edu uh, education. So with those um, few words, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome, I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable guests, OPDs, I believe for the Konrad Adenauer Foundation, this topic has been on our agenda. And I do believe that our director is excited to give these welcoming remarks. And it is a topic very dear to her heart. And inclusivity of persons with disabilities is very, very key for the work that the foundation does in Namibia, as you have come to note. With this, I give the pleasure of handing over to our director to give the official uh, welcoming remarks and welcome everyone. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are now Getting closer to the highlight of today's event, the landmark and milestone of the celebration of the translation of the Namibian constitution, uh, please allow me by saying that all protocol are observed. So, and I thank all the attendants coming to this part of the session. And I see the, the venue is uh, full and we have a lot of uh, organizations dealing with disabilities here today from the uh, legal society, from the research society, and it's really amazing to see you all here, to have you here, and, and so to see how you already start networking, and also to see the constitu constitution translate to Braille just in front of you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Konrad Anna Foundation Namibia recognized the need for inclusivity at all levels of society. It is in line with our values and mandate of ensuring a participative, participative democracy and human rights, and we would like to do more step forward than this. The Konrad Adenauer Foundation Office this year in collaboration with our partners, the Namibian Federation of the Visually Impaired, are proud to announce the successful completion 
of the special, special initiative which supports people with visual impairments. It is also an initiative to raise awareness and to advocate the broader disabilities sector in Namibia. As we started, stated earlier, access to information is a fundamental right to, in a democracy. In particular, the Namibian constitution, that's yeah, almost 30, more than 30 years now in operation and, and as a supreme law of the country, we now can make it possible and available to people with disability, especially with those who are visually impaired. Through this positive collaboration with the translation and printing of the Namibian Constitution in Braille, which is, in my eyes, a milestone, we trust that the output of our collective effort will go a long way, ensuring access to the Namibian Constitution in the next step to do similar projects in translating education, educational materials for persons with disabilities. We equally believe that these small efforts will enhance Namibia's democratic structure, structure in an inclusive manner and promote human rights by means of providing an opportunity to all citizens to access of information and education. It is about inclusive education as we hear it in the session earlier. CAS has um, decided to support people with disability and their stakeholders. It is not just meant for the benefit of the people living with visual disability, but also to support key stakeholders and associations in Namibia and also key ministries and governmental agency. As we know that in a time of limited budget, government cannot solve these problems alone. One of our core mission at the Konrad Arno Stiftung Namibia Angola is the promotion of human rights, rule of law, and also to promote dialogues. It is for this reason that we came together with our cooperation partners, the Namibian Federation of Visually Impaired, to ensure that visually impaired people have access to the Namibian constitutions, know their rights, and can protect them. We believe that access by all citizens to the constitutions and information is a fundamental element for inclusion. It will enforce peace, nation building, and prosperity. This will also help to be able to hold them, the government, accountable and to demand equal treatment. Ladies and gentlemen, with these few words, I wish to congratulate the Namibian Federal Association for Visually Impaired and to launch this Namibian constitution in Braille and hoping that it reach all its members countrywide. Well, dear guests, it's our honor to be present here today. It's a special occasion and we, that we officially launch the Constitution in Braille. Let me conclude by a statement I, I mentioned earlier this morning. Disability is not inability. It is a challenge about accessibility. Ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate this uh, wonderful moment, this milestone, and we hope that with that, we all together can make the life of a part of our society a bit easier and give them the possibility to, to read the Constitution from first hand and not rely on others. And as I said, it's just a first step, an opening door. We would like to go further. We would like to be more engaged with uh, people with disabilities, knowing that there are associations and there are organizations there. We just need to, to hold hands and speak with one voice, what's already mentioned earlier, and also to reach the politicians, to reach the parliament and so forth, to, to give more attention to that. I think this is important. 
Yeah, without further words, I hope with that wonderful day today we can empower ourselves and can put uh, the sector of disability on the stage, on the focus. And with, without further saying, I thank you very much to all the, the colleagues who are engaged in this project, to the Federation itself, and to all of you who have contributed that this come to a success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the director of the Konrad Adenauer Foundation, Namibia Angola office, Mrs. Natalie Rosman, for those kind words. A lot of hope remains on the road ahead, relationships to be forged, so we are looking forward. Next up, we would like to introduce Ms. Felicity Overses, acting executive director for the Ministry of Justice to deliver the keynote address for this landmark event. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. What is the one thing that distinguishes one human being from another? What is the matrix? What are the salient features that makes one worthy of being called a human being? And to be seen as a human being, and for one to feel as a human being? Is it the ability to breathe? Is it having heart, a heart or lungs or a kidney, maybe having two hands or legs, or is it the ability to taste, to hear, to touch, to feel or sense? Or is it the ability to think, to write, to type, or perhaps to reason, or to dream? Which one will qualify me or you to be qualified as a human being, or to be classified as a human being? Various disciplines such as, such as science, sociology, philosophy, and theology have they, for their own purpose, developed criteria of what a human being is. And these criteria have become part of our belief systems, embedded in our cultures, our policies, our legal frameworks, and institutions. And these, dear people, have further intensified the alienation the stigmatization and discrimination against persons with disabilities. As an activist for rights for persons with disabilities, I feel humbled and honored to give this keynote address at the launch of this very overdue and very important Namibian constitution in Braille. At this point, allow me to warmly greet all of you here present. Allow me to acknowledge the presence of the Ombudsman of the Republic of Namibia, the Director of the Legal Assistance Center, but I would I particularly want to acknowledge and thank Conrad Adenauer Stiftung, Ms. Natalie Rutzmann, Ms. Claudia Gasco. <laughs> thank you so much for your role in heeding to the often silent call and echoes of persons with disabilities. Dear all here present, for centuries, persons living with disabilities have been subjected to derogatory names such as mad, demon-possessed, blindness, idiot, imbecile, mentally detarded, or insane. Even to the extent that society, which is you and I, even calls someone a retard when they are perceived to speak or act in a way that is not commonly what is called 
a normal human being will talk or act like. Even within our cultures, these names have become embedded and part of everyday life and speech and writing. With societal progression, these names have been elevated to disabled persons and mentally ill. For example, in my culture, which is Kwe Kokovap, there are, there are names that are used. For example, Abi is the word that is used for, dis uh, uh, for general disability. If you are Kwame, for someone with a speech impairment, or gay beya, for someone considered not to reason fully <laughs> and with limited thinking ability. Now, dear all here present, when Namibia became a constitutional democracy in 1990, Namibia through its institutions, the three organs of state, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary, pledged to uphold the supremacy of the constitution, the rule of the law, democracy, entrenched rights and freedoms, separation of powers, and constitutional review. Interestingly, the core value that binds the organs of state to the Namibian people is the one of the right to dignity, recognized in Article 8, which says that the dignity of all persons shall be inviolable. What does this mean? It means it cannot be touched, it cannot be tampered with, it cannot be dishonored. This was recently affirmed in the highest court of the land by the Supreme Court of Namibia when they delivered the judgment in Kengos versus Hishono. Borrowing from the words of the Constitutional Court of South Africa, our court cited as follows. The value of dignity in our constitutional framework can therefore not be doubted. The Constitution asserts dignity to contradict our past in which human dignity for black, South Africans, my emphasis, Namibians, was routinely and cruelly denied. It asserts it to inform the future, to invest in our democracy, respect for the intrinsic worth of all human beings. Dear all, human dignity therefore informs constitutional adjudication and interpretation at all ranges of levels. It is a value that informs the interpretation of many, possibly all other rights. And I continue. Now, in this judgment, our court recognizes and informs us of two things. Firstly, that the core value on which all other values and rights is based is the one of human dignity. Secondly, that dignity is one of the values on which the Namibian constitutional democracy is based. Now, what exactly is human dignity? The three attributes of human dignity are first, the unique qualities that are priceless and irreplaceable and constitute an individual's inherent dignity. Secondly, the relationship and the expectation of the individual vis-a-vis -vis the perceptions of the community in the society. Thirdly, that the state is required to provide existential minimum living conditions which are embodied in second generation rights. Now, second generation rights are rights like the right to education, housing, and language, like sign language. What does this mean for the, mean for the organs of state and you and I? One, it means that the executive should make policies, the legislature, should make laws and the administration should implement policies which ensures that all persons enjoy the rights and freedoms without fear. Two, it also means that the courts must give effect to the value of human dignity when interpreting rights and freedoms. Lastly, it means that you and I, who are part of the Namibian society, that we should treat each other with respect. Because it starts with you and I in this room to refrain and to take duty to tell others to refrain from using names and labels that justify and intensify the treatment of persons with disabilities. As the Minister of Justice and me as the Chief of the Legislative Drafting Division, I will do my utmost best to ensure that policies and legislative frameworks that hinder persons with disabilities from full enjoyment of democracy 
and the exercise of rights and freedom are reformed and considered, no matter the platform. To ensure, to ensure this, I have in the combating of the Rape Amendment Bill, which is currently in the National Assembly, introduced mental and physical disability as one of the factors to constitute coercive circumstances and thus warranting high, um, higher imprisonment sentence. Dear all, we know that we have been under the occupation of the South African uh, um, government as a mandate territory. As a result, the often discriminatory apartheid laws, policies, practices, and institutional frameworks were in from, in frame, uh, imposed on us from 1990 to 1989. These remnants, the remnants of these policies are still there and still continue to exist. Although government has made effort to reform some, it was in 2018 that the repeal of obsolete laws was enacted in an effort to do away with laws which became obsolete, either because they are superseded by other laws or because they are discriminatory in some form or the basis of the law no longer exists. I'm in the process of submitting the second phase of the repeal of obsolete laws bill to parliament, and I hope to table it in the next session. The political will of government was manifested, uh, manifested sorry, initially by the establishment of the 1997 National Disability uh, Policy, the National Disability Councils Act, and Namibia ratif ratifying the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, including the protocol in 2007. But the continuing leadership challenges and allegations of infighting within the Disability Council also contributed quite significantly to the delays in the reform process. We commit to accelerate the pace of law reform and to ensure that further work introduces language that is consistent with the provisions of our constitutional and dignity framework. We will do our part, although it may not be enough, so that we must protect, fulfill, and promote the rights of persons with disabilities. I'm also aware that a lot of policies, laws, and institutional frameworks are not responsive to the needs of persons with disabilities. I'm fortunate to have been part of the reform on the mental health bill, which I hope will find itself to the table of the Cabinet Committee on Legislation very soon. I want to assure you that during my time as the Minister of Justice and as a member of Parliament, and even beyond that, I will do my part to ensure and assist in ensuring that policies and law remove derogatory terminology associated with persons with disabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, persons with disabilities should not be begging and advocating to be seen and treated with dignity or as deserving equal treatment. In fact, it should be a cabinet directive that all policies and lawmaking, including strategies, have implementation plans for persons with disabilities. Let me take an example. When building works are done, we do not have to ask whether there is a person or employee in need for infrastructure catering for a wheelchair or a computer or a program adjusted for, that, for a person with visual or speech impairment. This should already form part of the planning process. I had the privilege to work with the now departed Advocate Becker. He was a legislative drafter for the Republic of Namibia for more than 30 years. And although he was really visually impaired, he seemed to know his way around. He was very fortunate to be able to de de uh, design his own programs, and he drafted legislation without assistance. Ms. Rusa Ntindi, a person with albinism, who is an activist and scholar in her own right, with a known track record of disability rights activists, is another success story of people who, despite their means, was able to make it. Mr. Oscar, who is currently in my office, visually impaired, has not shielded away from standing up with his, for his rights in the so-called normal space. These are our own stories. Despite the challenges they faced, they never complained complained, but that didn't mean they needed the ministry to look out for their needs, or the needs they may have had. Despite this, they did exemplary work. Not many of us are in this position. And the point remains, 
that persons with disability do not need to ask or beg us to see them and provide assistance to them. Dear all, lastly, I want to emphasize that it is not the fact that we have a written constitution that confers the right to equality, and it is not the fact that Namibia has committed itself by ratifying the Convention on the Right of Persons with Disability, but it is because we are all human beings who have long been uh, persons with disabilities, who have long been sidelined from the mainstream policy and legislative agenda of government. And it is because our dignity has for, for long been violated. And we long and we thirst that our dignity be restored, and the time is now. That you and I, as well as the government, the private sector, and the civil society should join efforts and hands to speed up policy, law, and institutional framework. That we start from the family and society too and raise awareness and reassess how we relate to each other and to persons living with disability for the collective health and productivity of the Namibian nation. At this point, I want to leave you with a quote by Louis Braille. It says, Braille is knowledge and knowledge is power. I thank you. Thank you very, very much, Ms. Felicity Overseas. One day I will learn how to pronounce your surname properly so that uh, we are also considering other languages in the country. <laughs> All right. And that same goes for the Constitution. Um, in Braille, yes, maybe next on the list should be to translate the Constitution into other languages. Uh, and make them rurally accessible, but that's a topic for another day. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. For now, I would like to hand over again to our cooperation partner, Mr. Moses, uh, for the overview of the disability organizations in Namibia, and in particular the constitution distribution centers, and how we plan to take the constitutions in Braille into the regions and ensure that the 100 copies that were printed for now uh, are distributed equally and uh, for us to see how many more we need to start printing going forward. Um, before we go there, I want to thank our partners, Mr. Moses, for those who are visually impaired here today. Uh, the program in, I know you can't see it visually impaired, I'm sorry, but um, the program f is also available for those who are visually impaired today, printed in Braille um, at our corporation partners' offices. Uh, yes, so please do not just approach the Konrad Adenauer Foundation for the printing of Braille materials. Um, we have other service providers in the country that can assist in that regard as well. So let's tackle that when we get there, especially when it comes to the printing of newspapers in Braille. Uh, I can talk on for hours on materials we need to print in Braille. Let's hand over to Mr. Moses to give us an exciting overview of the distribution. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Crowdy. Um, uh, representing the CASI uh, Foundation. Um, yeah, I just want to just give a bit of uh, the overview of uh, the entire uh, organizations of personal disability, um, more specifically NVI. Um, those that have uh, been uh, here since morning time, uh, you have had um, uh, the presentations from uh, uh, OPGs themselves. Uh, one key thing that uh, they have mentioned is the uh, issue of um, uh, accessibility. Uh, accessibility can be in um, information, infrastructure, um, can be transportations, 
and uh, so on. And something which is quite important is that uh, uh, accessibility is key when it's coming to person with uh, disability. So uh, if one have to employ a person with uh, disability, first of all, the employer must consider the accessibility, the reasonable accommodations. So you can't um, uh, tell me that uh, you want to employ somebody who is having a uh, disability, and then yet uh, you did not uh, you know, modify all, you don't have uh, uh, facilities that is uh, that can able to accommodate uh, a person with uh, disability uh, whom you want uh, to be your employees. So uh, when it's coming to Braille, uh, it's only mm, not print, uh, printing material in Braille in six dots, but we have also to look into printing uh, information in, in, in the Raj, in the Raj font or in the Raj print. And I'm quite sure that uh, a, a lot of people, if you, if you just even in these, in these, uh, or if you say that uh, they might, they must remove their their, their glass, uh, they will become uh, uh, visually impaired. Uh, low vision. If you said, okay, read here, remove your glass, read here, the person will be struggling. So information also need to be printed in a large font, in large print. And again, in audio. Because <clears throat> you might find uh, somebody who become visually impaired yesterday, and this person cannot uh, able to read uh, Braille. Um, and of course, uh, he cannot uh, able to read the large print. Uh, he or she may be total blind. Then he need uh, to know what's happening. Therefore, uh, the information also needs to be in uh, audio format, first in the constitution. We can come up with a way on how to put the constitution in audio. So um, there are quite a lot of uh, documents uh, that need to be accessible. Uh, we are talking about our own, our own uh, national documents, uh, the National Disability Act of 26 of uh, 2004, if I'm not uh, wrong. Uh, it's, not in, it's, not, it's not in the Braille, it's not accessible. So for how many years now? We are talking about um, the, 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 the government gazette. So one time I tried to cons consult the Minister of Justice uh, to say that, uh, look, um, there are some bills that uh, we also want to know so it creates some uh, uh, issues of uh, you know, there's no funds and, and so on and so forth. But when it's coming to the Namibian constitutions and then to the UNCRPD, Namibian constitutions um, chapter three, it addresses all the rights um, from uh, respect of human dignity, protection of uh, life, protection for liberty, uh, protection of uh, fundamental rights and freedoms and so on. You come to the affirmative action, Article 23, and then you go to uh, Article 13 on the UNCRPD, access to justice, and then uh, Article 9, if I'm not wrong, accessibility. So we are doing really, we are not doing more when it's coming to you know, our constitutions and the other international uh, treaties. But of course, I, I, I appreciate, <laughs> yeah, I must also learn how to appreciate the literature that uh, uh, some institutions are doing, like our partner, the Conrad uh, um, uh, Foundations. They really, really did something which is uh, an uh, ex 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 extraordinary. They have uh, supported us, first of all, financially, to print those uh, constitutions, which means that uh, through printing the constitution, we get 
some little funds to maintain the activity of the federations, and at the end, the information is also in accessible format that we can able to disseminate to our persons for them to know what is in our constitutions. And I know that uh, in your ministries, in your institutions, as you are sitting here, I know that you are thinking of some certain documents that uh, if this one can also be in accessible format. But always the caller saying there's no funds. There's no funds, especially when it's coming to persons with disability. And uh, of course, we must admit that uh, uh, something somehow is not right. Uh, we can't uh, and really get fund, a direct fund from, uh, from, from the government. Always we are getting through, you know, this entity or through these uh, uh, stakeholders. There's not a direct channel of saying that uh, this budget is for OPDs, straightforward, without, uh, you know, corners. We can able to, or we have a capacity to take an accountability on how to execute uh, uh, funds. And I believe that um, the Namibia Training Authority, uh, they can uh, testify on that. I hope, uh, I believe Master Maiti is here. Thank you very much, uh, Master Maiti, for coming and the witness these uh, events. So as OPDs, uh, uh, we have a capacity. We just need uh, you know, your support, and then the rest will do it uh, on, our, on our own, and they give you uh, reports. So um, this uh, book, where it is? Constitution is printed in uh, two volumes. In two volumes, uh, we have uh, volume volume one. It's very big. Volume one and uh, volume two. To be your voice. Ah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Constitution is being printed in two volumes. Uh, volume one and the volume two. Um, and uh, it uh, have uh, 448. Uh, Susan Mangara, am I right or wrong? 500 and 501. 501. So, and in uh, black and white, uh, um, Voice Moses. Yeah, I'll be. I'll, I'll go back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And mention that uh, the, this constitution just in English, and that we are uh, expect in the future to be in uh, in uh, some uh, vernacular languages. Um, can be Noshwambo, Herero, Damara, Afrikaans, Rukwangali. And, 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 and so on. Because something that is quite important, and uh, uh, Ms. Felicity was, uh, um, when she was presenting, she, quite, she spoke a lot of uh, rights, uh, rights, rights. As persons with disability, one is that uh, we need to understand, to really understand, and they know when somebody saying the rights of person with disability, what actually that person means. And the, where can we find those rights? In, in simple language or in a simple format. And that's the only way we can able to lobby and advocate our, our rights. Otherwise, if uh, documents are, are just coming in uh, legal terms, uh, it will just uh, leave us with, with, with nothing. 
So we want at least uh, you know, documents to be in, in, in symbol or to be translated or to be trained that, okay, the document actually means A, B, C, D. And in the morning, I asked a question here, and to some people, I believe that uh, it was somehow uh, just to know the difference between the policy and, and the act. I don't know. But if this could be in, uh, in a, in a, be explained in a simple terms, it might assist me to lobby and advocate and raise awareness at the same time. So, um, dear colleagues, I don't want to spend much time really uh, on standing here. Um, I just want to call uh, my two staff uh, just to give you or to read um, what is what's actually in the constitution and uh, those who have a smartphone I know 95 percent if not 100 percent in this hall or in this room have a smartphone you can uh, google uh, the Namibian constitution and then uh, try to to, to, to look for to look um, or search article article 23 affirmative uh, action and then uh, article um, which article must I take um, um, uh, okay article 7 the uh, protection uh, for uh, liberty if I'm not wrong uh, Mangara and Susan uh, can you also page okay take article Eight and Susan Mangra take article twenty three, and uh, you, you may stand if you don't mind. And those who have uh, those who have phones, uh, you can follow if uh, they are giving you uh, what is in those articles. Uh, this one is just an, an, a real practical, or just for you to see that uh, yes, what has been printed. Is really what is in the in the constitutions. Um, uh, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Susan. I'm going to read Article 8. Uh, Article 8, it's saying, respect for human dignity. The dignity of all persons shall be inviolable. Proceeding or in other proceedings before any organ of the state and during the Enforcement, enforcement of a personal, personality, respect for human dignity, shall be graded. No person shall be, sub, no person shall be subject, subject to tut or to share in human or dignity re, re treatment, treatment or punishment. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's Th all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Susan. I think that is enough for today. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yes, uh, Ms. Mwangera. Okay, I'm going to read Article 23, which is affirmative action. Number one, the practice of racial discrimination and the practice and in ideology of a apartheid from, from which the majority of the people of Namibia have suffered for for so long shall be prohibited and by act of parliament such practices and the pro the progression the progression of such practices may be ref refunded criminally criminally punishable by the ordinary court by means of such punishment sweet i think it's too sweet it's okay yeah for today is fine all right okay just to show you that um um 
the constitution is really in braille and um, one can read it in braille and uh, you will understand and 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 then know and that's what we are talking uh, accessibility uh, access to justice so now they knows uh, what those uh, article uh, denote so let me go to the uh, distributions of um, uh, the documents, the, the constitution. Uh, yes, um, we only have um, 100 copy. Uh, that's actually in two volumes. And uh, looking to the number of uh, visual impacts uh, in Namibia, whom I need to use uh, uh, to read the constitution, is quite big. Um, we talk about um, uh, 31,970 something if I'm not wrong, of person with the visual impairments. Uh, however, that includes low visions and the total blind. Um, we, um, we have actually more than six senders uh, where we are going to distribute to those uh, uh, documents or the constitution um, uh, countrywide. Uh, some copies um, will um, distribute them or will take them to the University of Namibia uh, main campus um, and then uh, uh, the other copy we will take them to Rundu uh, UNAM campus um, and uh, to the center for the visual embed at uh, Sawiemwa and then uh, the other copy we we'll take them to the National Library uh, here in Windhoek. And then um, the other copies, we will take them to Okuliangava uh, Disability Resource Center. And uh, uh, some copies uh, will remain at the head office. And um, others will take them to, to the north at um, Onipa uh, Rehabilitation uh, Center. And then uh, uh, the other copy will take them to, to Katima Moriro uh, at our regional association. So what will be done is that um, we just have to give uh, um, two or three, uh, but they will be, or they will remain um, in, the, in the offices or in terms of UNAM, uh, they will remain um, in the red line. Um, so that uh, whoever person with visual impairment want to read, uh, she, he or she will just go bolo, read it, and, and, and retain it. Because uh, we don't have uh, you know, a large quantity where we have to give to each and, and everybody. I think um, uh, Ms. 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 Natalia, uh, she mentioned that, uh, that uh, this one is just a start. Um, and I believe that in the future, uh, maybe we'll be printing more um, in um, local language for that matter, uh, so that uh, we'll cover all the concerns and, and the corners uh, of, of, of the Republic of, uh, of Namibia. Um, uh, uh, dear colleagues, um, uh, participants, uh, delegates, um, I, or it's from the bottom of my heart, um, you know, standing here and <laughs> at this launch of the constitution, and I believe and I hope that uh, just in the start, I would also want to be called for the other national documents to be launched. I don't know from which ministry. I hope justice, right? Justice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who is in the list, but I know that the list is full. Um, yeah, I hope that uh, we will be still be called for, for the other uh, range. And then um, uh, let us take uh, disability uh, serious. Um, uh, disability is all about uh, patients and, um, and the kind. Um, so with that, um, I just want to say you know, uh, informal. Uh, viva Disability Viva! Viva! Viva NFPD and Viva!
Viva Ene Viva Viva. Viva. Aluta. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much for those refreshing closing uh, from your side, uh, dear cooperation partner, dear uh, NFVI, dear Moses and Gibran Dulwa. And um, we look forward to the future and uh, what, what uh, it holds for the cooperation as well and with other uh, future cooperation partners as well. For now, I would like to give the final say and the final closing to Mrs. Jessica Gavachap. She is the head of a legal compliance and company secretary for the National Disability Council of Namibia. Uh, she has joined us throughout the course of today, all day, and uh, I do hope uh, she is going to join the OPDs and also key stakeholders uh, uh, after this for some refreshing engagements, cooperation going forward together with the team at the uh, National Disability Council. And uh, after the closing, we will then be having our final photo together with uh, uh, selected persons that are engaged uh, in the process of the, uh, um, the printing as well as the distribution and the official launch of the Constitution and Braille. So uh, they, uh, we have also the networking opportunity for the guests that joined us. I do believe we have also Mr. Amon Haufiko in the house. Uh, he is the uh, TVET standard uh, manager for the TVET standard at the uh, Namibia Training Authority. If you have any curricula revision uh, recommendations, please bombard him. Um, he would love to hear from you. And of course, to Mr. Maite Katulu for the training division. Um, and uh, I think we also have uh, uh, some other key guests in the house and the library who's got uh, some resources uh, for visual impairments. And I mean, when do you ever get to see the ombudsman in the house uh, to, to ask what you need to uh, at his own, own time? Of course, uh, if I did leave anyone out at this stage, for now I also want to thank Mr. Ashongo from our side for the uh, encouraging words and for also the Luderitz uh, Disability Association. I am not going to mention all the OPDs from our side, but they came from far. Uh, we always say Luderitz is quite far and it's in the deep corner of the south. So if you have any uh, uh, questions for disabilities in the south and uh, representing Karas region, that is the man to speak to. That is Mr. O'Brien uh, sitting uh, on the right hand side. And uh, I think with that, um, any other information you need from OPDs, uh, our doors at CAS are always open. Uh, please come and approach us. Come and talk to Mr. Ashongo. Uh, let us not be strangers, let us be a family together. From our side, I'm going to hand over the final remarks to Ms. Jessica. Thank you very much. Claudia. Um, in closing, I would like to greet Claudia again for keeping us tentilated and intrigued throughout the day as our moderator. Um, I know it's not easy, um, but you did quite well. Thank you very much for that. Um, we would also like in closing to greet Advocate Diakua, um, the Ombudsman of Namibia, um, Director of uh, the Legal Assistance Center, um, Ms. Tony Hancox, um, we'd like to greet uh, Mr. Shungu. He's the chairperson of the NFPDN, um, Madame Kovosis, um, on behalf of the Minister of Justice and in her own capacity, as well as the acting ED of the Ministry of Justice. Um, all the organizations of persons with disabilities represented at this session. Um, the director of the National Disability of Council, um, Madame Philander, in her absentia and as well as the director of uh, um, Konrad Adenauer Stiftung and in particular persons of disabilities that are present in the session. Um, in closing, it's very difficult when everyone has been involved for the whole day, um, but <coughs> apologies. What I wanted to note is in particular the aspects of uh, um, international disability law relating to the shift from the medical model 
to the social model where disability was addressed in terms of your condition and now disability is looked at what can society do to ensure that people with disabilities are integrated into society and the translation of the constitution into braille is an effort by society to ensure that persons with disabilities, in particular those with visual impairments, are considered with their rights to access to information. And for that, we have to also um, celebrate that milestone on this long journey that we have. Um, although we might not have reached our destination, we have definitely reached a stop on the journey. And I think we can rest and celebrate before we take it further again tomorrow. Um, I think one important aspect that we also need to consider is the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think in all our discussions today, um, we have not really emphasized um, the importance of the trigger that um, with regard to mental health that COVID-19 has had on Namibia and the world as a, um, on Namibia society. Um, COVID um, has led to the loss of many people. Um, people have been left with physical disabilities as well due to those that have recovered um, from this disease. It has left many with uh, mental and psychosocial problems as well, which was caused um, from the trauma. And I think many of these victims are still suffering from PTSD. And I think um, the distinction between the shift from the medical to the social model is that the only difference between um, 95% of the nation is that the disability is then distinguished from temporary to permanent based on the medical definition for disability. I think also one important aspect um, that was not addressed is the intersectionality of disability. Um, we tend to forget that persons with disabilities are only not identified in that context, but that also are classified under other minorities such as previously disadvantaged, us as women, um, the girl child as well, um, the LGDPI community where you have persons that fall in the community but that also suffer, that also have a disability, and then also the intersectionality between the various categories of disabilities where you will have a person with disability who is a, a wheelchair user but equally may be visually impaired as well. And I think these complexities also need to be addressed that these rights within the constitution are all inclusive and very comprehensive. When we speak of disability rights and we speak of access to information, access to justice, to education, and so forth, it does not only specifically speak of one, but in addressing some disabilities or problems that people with disabilities are facing, we can also equally address the problems faced by people who share these intersectionalities. Um, there's a saying <coughs> that, um, the disregard for a certain problem is the, is the arrogance that, or the ignorance that you might not have to, ch have to face that challenge as well. And I think it is important in closing to note that um, a lot of the persons with disabilities in terms of our data have disability by virtue of acquisition. They, the disability is either acquired through an illness, a long-term illness, old age, or it could be by virtue of a motor vehicle accident. And I think this is a, it's important for all of us to consider the possibility um, that all of us may one day have a disability as well. Um, in closing, um, to re-emphasize the need and the importance for collective effort and for the collaboration of all key stakeholders and all programs and initiatives currently in Namibia. Um, there's a saying that alone you run faster, but together you run further. I think it is important for us to stand together, to hold hands and to fight for a cause that we all sincerely and genuinely care for. Thank you. Sure you must be tired by my presence by now, especially the OPDs. <laughs> I just uh, would like to uh, give one answer to a, one, a comment question uh, post on our Facebook pages. Um, if there will be copies of the Constitution and Braille distributed to the uh, Dr. Romanos Campungu uh, Secondary School Special Unit for Visually Impaired Learners, yes. They are on the distribution list. If we were to go through the various uh, um, 
institutions who are receiving copies, I think we would take up at a whole hour. So uh, if you do uh, need more information with regard to the Constitution and Braille, the distribution and uh, anything uh, in terms of uh, other printed materials and Braille, please do not hesitate to get in touch with uh, the uh, Federation for Visual Impaired uh, headquarters. Um, I think uh, you have a website, uh, I believe, uh, Mr. Moses. If not, you can always get in touch with the Conrad Adenauer Foundation and we will connect you to the right uh, persons uh, that can give you the answers you seek, I hope. So with that, um, I would like to just uh, uh, say thank you again to everyone for attending and we wish you all a safe journey home and hopefully this is not the last that uh, we will see each other. So thank you very much. We officially close for the evening.